Oh my god, bro. The waves are firing today. But the bigger the waves are, the harder it is to paddle out. So today, hopefully I can share with you some of my tips to paddle out on a bigger day. Full disclaimer, I've only been surfing for two years. I'm by no means a decent surfer. The whole point of making this video is to show you that if I can paddle out, you can paddle out. In order to give you an idea of what you may actually go through, I'll leave the whole clip uncut so you can get a feel of how desperate things can be when you're on the board. Before we roll the clip, I would like to explain some of the basic idea. First, whitewater equals backwards and rip current equals forward. My strategy is simple. Find the rip current to take me out and avoid as much white water as possible. Take my home break for instance. There are rocks on both sides of the beach and along the rocks are where rip currents usually occur. But keep in mind, this is not 100%. So the best way is to ask your local surf shop or your advanced surfer friend. The day I paddle out, the waves are breaking on the left side of the beach. Here is where that pile of rocks and there was a point break right here and there was another point break right here. So my strategy is to paddle out along the rock as close as possible, hoping that rip current takes me out far enough where I can then paddle straight right to find the second rip current. Let's take a look at what actually went on that day. If you're not a strong paddler like myself, then I would recommend you to walk as far as you can to save some energy. At some surf spots, the further you go, the deeper the bottom is. Usually waves are breaking really nice on these places, but most of the spots I've served, they all have sandbar. And at the end of the sandbar is where you get the most hollow and powerful breaks. But once you paddle out that point, you pretty much make it to the lineup. If you're still struggling walking out with your board, chances are you're holding your board too far forward. That will make it really hard to get past the white water. Personally, I put all my body weight on the tail of the board. Whenever the white water comes, I'll press really hard on the tail of the board, making the nose to pop and the white water should travel directly underneath my board. Okay, right here was where I started paddling. When I'm paddling, if the incoming white water is not too big, and I'll do sort of like a push-up motion to lift my upper body up, to let the white water pass between my board and my torso. But even that, you're gonna be dragged backwards whenever the white water hits you. Okay, right here, the white water was taller than me, so I decided to do a turtle roll. Normally, I would try to avoid turtle roll as much as I can because it just takes more time to recover and start paddling again. Like right here. I'm actually shallow enough to walk again. If it's a bigger day, I'll wait until the set passes. I would just freaking book it. Paddle as hard as I can. Just give it everything I can. Because if you take a rest too early, that's where you can really get nailed by the next set. But I will say that day was relatively easy to paddle out. Even the size was there, the current pushing inwards is not that strong. You can kind of see the shape of the foam created by the previous wave. And the ideal route is to paddle around the white foam. That's where usually you can find grip current. And that was what I did that day. See, this is what I was talking about. Oh, shit. A big set coming in again. Had I rest earlier, I would really be nailed and pushed all the way back to the beach. So my advice is, if you really want to get to the lineup, don't take any breather until you actually get there. Uh oh. In hindsight, I think this is where I made mistake. I thought this wave is gonna be super hollow, that's why I choose to turtle roll. But from this footage, I think I can get away with doing the push-up motion. Ah, oh, damn it. 
My dumb ass is in someone's way. Sorry, bro. Didn't mean to do that. And if you were in my shoes, where you see a surfer taking off right in front of you, make sure you always paddle towards the white water. I know that's gonna sack you back a lot further, but that's actually safer for both of you because a surfer tends to go on the open face. If you paddle towards this open face, you most likely are gonna block them, like what I just did. Again, I'm sorry, bro. I'm such a cancer on the water. There we go. As soon as I pedal out, there was a wave coming right towards me. So I turned my board, trying to catch the wave. But remember, I'm horrible at longboard. Jesus Christ, Darren. Can you stop cooking out? Oh, bro. I'm sorry, man. I was just a freaking cancer that day. You know, dropping in on someone, especially on a longboard, is hella dangerous. That thing is like a freaking tank. Well, you just run anything and anyone over. So to whoever I dropped in on. I'm really sorry, bro. I know that was a dick move, but uh, I didn't do it on purpose. I know, I should have looked, and I didn't. I just hope that you forgive me. Okay, that's pretty much it for today. Again, I do want to say that I'm by no means a professional surfer, and I'm a terrible, terrible longboarder. The whole point of this video is to show you some of the tips that maybe you can incorporate on your next paddle out. And I do encourage you to comment below on what you agree or disagree with. It will be such a pleasure to learn from all of you too. If you still struggle on your next paddle out, there's probably something wrong with your paddling technique. And I know most of you might not be living by the beach, just like me. And you might be able to surf only on the weekends, just like me. So in the next video, I'm gonna share with you some of the workout I do at home. If you try out for a week, you will be surprised on how much more wave you can catch, how much faster you can paddle. So I guess I'll see you next time. Darren Huang here, signing off. Peace.